Hi guys, my name is Dr. Rocker and today I'll show you how to draw a proper arm. And this will be a draw along, so take out your pencil and take out a piece of paper and let's draw! But before we start, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notification so you won't miss out on videos like this, tutorials, cool drawing videos and all the likes. And make sure to watch the whole video. There are a ton of good tips in there. Yeah! But now for real, let's draw! I guess the best way to approach a video like that is to watch it first and then take out your pencil and a piece of paper and try to draw along. As you can see, this will be very simple. We start with total simple forms. Just a circle and two rectangles. Although the one for the forearm is more of a cylinder actually. And for the hand, I just did a quick circle just for the placement. And here I'm already starting with the shoulder muscle. From this angle, we will only be able to see two muscles. And beneath this big shoulder muscle, there's already the bicep to be seen. And the lead I'm using, by the way, is a 2H lead. I will switch to an HB later, but only so you can see it better. So if you're using a 2H pencil, just stick to that one. As I'm sure you will have noticed, we look at this arm from the front. But still I like to draw the tricep quite prominent. Cause in comic book drawings it's always nice to exaggerate a little bit. The most important muscle in the forearm is called brachioradialis. Or the David Finch muscle as I like to call it. Cause I totally stole it from him like I draw them as well. Very exaggerated. It's this very big muscle that goes quite thin and ends up in the thumb. And underneath this muscle there are some smaller muscles coming out, like string-like muscles. And here we do a circle for the thumb muscle, if you could call it like that. And here I'm already drawing the thumb. I also will do a tutorial on hands someday and I will explain them pretty well I hope. And here I already do the fingers. I hope you all have seen the guide I made on, on hands where you can fix them if they are too big or too small. And as you can see this will be a fist. And here I'm adding some muscles which end up in the wrist. The good thing about those muscles is you don't have to be too anatomical correct. You can just do them as you like, if you know what I mean. And that's a small bump for the elbow. And now I'm going to erase it down a little bit. So I can start drawing all this properly. And with all the shadings and line weight. And for that, as I told you before, I'm using a different lead. It's an HB, so you can see it properly. But that would not be ideal for a bigger comic book drawing, because it would smudge too much. You don't have to erase everything, you could also just erase the smudging and the lines which aren't correct and stay with the original draft. And as you can see, here we are already adding line weight. Not on this line though, because the light will hit from the other side, so this will be in, in total shade. As you can see right now, I'm drawing a little sun here. And I was speeding it up because it's not necessary for the drawing process. But everything else is in real time of course. So you guys can keep up and if you can't, just hit the pause button. Now I'm basically tracing everything I did before, but way cleaner and not always the whole line. From now on it's more like a negative space drawing or a drawing with shadows. It's almost midnight by the way, here where I'm recording this, in my record studio rocker. Um, but it's the only time of day I could do a voiceover like that, because otherwise the kids will be blaring in the background all the time and that's a no-go for a thing like that. When I was thinking about this arm tutorial, I first wanted to do an arm from the side. But then I thought an arm like this, as I draw right here, would, would fit perfect on the torso we did, I guess, last week. Which I hope you have seen, 
because it's a pretty cool tutorial as well. If not, check it out. And then you could draw the torso and then add the hand I'm drawing right here. It fits. And when I say hand, I actually mean the arm, but I'm from Austria, we speak German, and when we say hand, we mean the arm actually, so that's a bit confusing. I even had to redo the intro because I was talking about drawing a proper hand and then I was like, darn, I'm not drawing a hand, just I'm drawing an arm. So I had to film it again, but yeah, that's that. Now, as I'm sure you have noticed, we are putting in all those strong blacks, which I did a great tutorial about a few days ago or I don't know, I don't even remember anymore, I work too much. But make sure to check that out as well if you haven't already, I think you might really like it. Now take a look at where the arrow is pointing, because irregularities or imperfections or however you will call them really help to make the drawing look way more alive. Yeah, now we basically try to find out where the shadows would be, the shades, just from being aware where the light source is and of course which form of the muscle is hit by the light. And also on this topic I did a tutorial, but quite some months ago, but check it out, it's pretty good, I dare say. I'm sorry if I sound like I want to sell you all my videos, but I really think it's good, so go and check it out. It's the one with Superman on the thumbnail. Those small shadings really make a big difference on drawings like that. I really love those. Here we do some more strong blacks, because of course this side of the arm is quite heavy in the blacks. Since the smiling sun is on the other side of our arm. Which is the same lighting as in our torso video from last week. So if you want to do a torso and an arm, you can just go ahead and use those two as reference. And I guess that's also a very interesting part. Because here you can see how I let the shadow grow. Because I have to think as well, all the time, where hits the, where hits the light. Um, and sometimes you define a shadow which really looks quite nice. And then you realize, too bad I have to do the whole area black. But that's just the way it goes. Let it grow. This side of the fingers is in total black. But that's a very cool effect, I think. But the upper side of the fingers, you can see them still, um, they will not be in total black because the light hits them, so... Looks pretty neat. Thumb needs a little bit of shading, of course. And here it's more like the folds from the knuckles from the thumb. And the round shape, which I called thumb muscle before, it's also in total black. And now some small shadings here and there, and some line weight. You can do it in, a, in another order if you like. Um, even I sometimes prefer to do the line weight beforehand. But actually it's better to do the line weight a bit later because very often, and I think I mentioned that before, very often you don't need line weight because it's blackened out anyway. So what I like to do is first do most of the really black and dark areas and then add the line weight. Because you can save a lot of time because of that. Doing line weight takes time and if you blacken it out afterwards it's all for nothing. Here I add a little bit more black. And now we already start the hatching process. Which is great. When you're at the hatching process you know you are almost there. But still it's a lot of work. But very important. Do a lot of hatching. Hatching, cross hatching, all those rendering details. 
And if you messed up somewhere, do even more hatching. You can bury a lot of mistakes in details. Trust me. But what's really important, and I said this in my tutorial uh, of the torso video also, please rotate your paper when you do hatching lines. I just didn't because I don't want you to get dizzy and I want you to see the overall picture. But it's, it's a pain. It's way easier when you rotate the paper so you feel most comfortable with your lines. And you have to find that out beforehand, of course. Some people prefer to move away from the body. Some people pre prefer to pull the line into the body. And you can also go from fin to thick or from thick to thin, which is the most common method, especially when you're using a pencil. But when I use inks, very often I prefer to do the hatching lines from fin to thick. All depends on the hand control and what you like. And also, especially when you're using a pencil, the lines look way better very often if you do them quite quick, but that's not necessarily always the best thing to do. Also, especially when using inks, sometimes I really take a lot of time to do those hatching lines, really slowly. But, as you might have thought, there's also a tutorial for this. It's called How to Render a Comic Book Drawing and Wolverine is on the thumbnail, I guess. Check it out, guys, there's so much to learn. When doing your hatching lines, try to make them very even and towards the light, um, the distance between the lines can get bigger so the shading will be lighter. And every once in a while, break some of those lines up. Then it looks more dynamic and more alive. You don't have to do strong blacks, by the way. You, can, you could also just use hatching lines. If you do enough cross hatching, the areas would get dark enough as well. Jim Lee does that a lot. For example. It's just a style of choice. Or you could also do hatching lines just in one direction. No cross hatching. That also looks pretty good. I guess the best thing to do would be to draw an arm or something like that and try those things out. Or maybe just do horizontal, uh, horizontal hatching lines and take a picture or look at it quite a, for a long time. And then you add some cross hatching lines and then you can decide what do you like better and so you can find your style. On forearms, however, I just only do horizontal hatching lines, mostly, most of the time. For some reason that works best, because they're all the same shapes actually, just those small bumps with all those length shape muscles and strings. I always say strings, I think it's called cord or I don't know. I hope you know what I mean. Not so easy to do this in another language, but hey. I want to be able to entertain people all around the world, so that's just better in English. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm doing my best here. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention. When you take a closer look at the hand, at the pinky, I did a small rim light there. Actually, there is no light source for that, but I just wanted to define where the finger is and I guess it looks better that way. You could blacken it out, then it would even be more realistic actually. But this way it looks better, although it's actually a cheat. Okay, we're finishing off with all the hatching. Some small adjustments here and there. And now another fun part begins. Veins. 
veins make the drawing of a superhero arm really cool, very important. It's also a negative space drawing, so you just draw the shade the vein throws on the muscle where it's on. As you can see right now, I really like to um, to do the main vein on the on the bicep. I really like to extend out to one side, left or right, whatever you think looks best. But you don't have to. You can you can go crazy with those veins. So just some shadow thrown on the bicep from the vein and then you do some really small tiny little dot like rendering lines or actually more like dots almost looks brilliant and now I'm defining some veins on the forearm you could do them before you do all the all the muscles and stuff like that or you can do it like I did it just here and then use a tiny eraser to erase everything and that's the actual more easy part. I usually do it the other way around but I should do it more often like this because I think you are getting a better result. Because when you have to break up every muscle because of the veins it can be quite hard to draw those muscles correct and also um, the most veins will be on the forearm and there are so many small muscles so you might be getting in devil's kitchen in no time is this even a saying I don't know I hope I hope I don't sound totally ridiculous but I'm sure you guys all know what I mean and when you do the shadow of the veins make sure to follow all the muscles that lie beneath them and you can see it's looking really cool and make sure to break some outlines of the drawing with a vein because those little bumps they make it look way more realistic and add some trouble to the picture if you know what I mean but in a good way and I even like to break those strong blacks with the veins although actually they wouldn't be seen but it's such a great effect and you can render them a little bit more so they appear a little bit darker but really do that it's really great like I told you before it doesn't have to be ultra realistic all the time you can cheat as much as you like if it's benefiting the drawing and just for a better understanding I show you where the chest muscles need to be and that's it and we are done guys <laughs> I hope you had fun drawing with me. Yes. I know, I had a blast. I love to spend time with you guys. <laughs> if you like videos like this, let me know down in the comments. And also, let me know what I should draw in a video like this. Have a great day, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys at my next video. Hasta la vista, baby. Bye!